It's that time, guys. It's here. It has turned up. It's been here about 40 minutes ago. It's the time to get this bad boy unboxed out of this factory seal packaging. Get it on my workbench and we'll see what the fuss is about, whether it's been overhyped or whether it is actually worth its weight in the amount of money that you're gonna spend. So guys, this video isn't gonna be all prim and proper. It's gonna be direct and to the point that you guys wanna see. All you lot wanna know is how good the pitch is, what the arm's like, the overall build quality, can you scratch on it and can you mix on it? And more importantly, would you buy one? And would I buy one? Well, I've had to to do the fucking review. But there's gonna be a proper edited review this week as well. I've ordered a video camera, digital video camera, 1080 to 4K. Um, we're just gonna go through the Mac with a condenser mic. It's gonna be a proper edited video. So for those of you that think this isn't professional, it's not entitled to be professional. This is my opinion as a DJ, the lover of technics for a very long time now, for nearly 20 years, this is my opinion. So, in that box down there covered in black wrap, that is a Mark 7, guys, a 1210 Mark 7. On my bench as it stands at the moment, all I have connected is my old school free channel classic UMX scratch mixer. For this occasion as well, I've brought three records that I know I can mix with my eyes closed, and uh, I also brought my scratch vinyl as well, and my keyboard scratch vinyls. I apologise for if anything keeps coming off and any messages keep going through. I do not know how to turn them off on, um, on what you want to call it, on the um, on the HUI P20 Pro. No idea. I've tried it on all the other Androids, so if anyone knows, tell me now so I can turn them off. Out to Ev. Ev, I'm glad you're watching because this is what you're going to want to see as well. See if, that, see if this is overhyped. So, oh, for fuck's sake, give it a minute. Let this guy do what he's doing because I can't get rid of any of that. Please guys, if anyone's got a Huawei P20 Pro, how the fucking hell do you stop notifications from coming through? Because everyone's now seems to, just all at once, all decide they want to fucking message me. This is the way it goes, isn't it? Look, it's been, <laughs> it's been quiet for the last hour, and then pow, messages, pow, voice messages. Great, fucking fantastic, we'll give it a minute. I'm gonna drink your fruit shoot, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Please let that be everybody. Right, let's get this fucking thing unboxed and let's see just how good this is. So this hasn't been opened, it's been sitting on the floor. First thing I'll say straight away guys, is it is fucking light as a feather. It's nowhere near as heavy as what the original models were like which we all know how fucking heavy they are. All right. <laughs> That's Stuart Curtis, that a Jay. Stuart's only got a short lunch break, Paul. Well, don't worry, Stu. Um, it's gonna be a proper, proper editor video at some point this week, like I've been explaining, so you will get to see video I'm trying to cut myself with this fast and as sharp as a proper Swan Morton surgical blade which I have actually had the pleasure of cutting myself open on a few times. I'll well, do it in such a way that if it is a load of turn I can just put it back in the rack and uh, let the couriers pick it up. Some people watching it, haven't they? What I like to see. That's a good start. So they put the shipping label on the deck when they wrapped it up, and they fucking wrapped it upside down. So what a bunch of dicks. I'm sure the packaging's okay because the box isn't exactly heavy, but besides the fucking point. What's the idiots? Eight hundred pounds, and they can't even be bothered to put the label on the right way around. Right, okay. Some, some static off of that now as well. So, there we go guys. Mark 7, if you've ever seen the GR box, 
it's exactly the bloody same. There is no difference between the two boxes apart from the fact that they say 1210 Mark 7. So, this is very special for me because this is like I explained to you all before. This is the first time I've actually opened a brand new Technics because I'm still a pretty, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that the pair that I originally bought from the d -Day shop I used to work for, before I worked for them, wasn't a brand new pair. So this is actually quite special to me, this, because this, this could be the first Technics I've actually unboxed. Right. So, first things first, the most pointless piece of cardboard I think I've ever bloody seen. Platter is dead on the top. you think they'd have that in the middle, because that's a bit... There's nothing actually... I don't know if you guys can see this. Hang on, just turn this down a bit. So... Why have they put that on the top, first of all? I mean, a little flimsy bit of cardboard isn't going to do that. I would have at least put polystyrene over that, because if something gets smacked on that... Oh well. One brand spanking new platter. Let's get that out of the way for a second. This is exactly the same packaging. Power cable. Ooh, free sticker. And looks like head shell bolts. Cables. I'll tell you what I'll do. Let's get this all out. And then I'll tell you what I'll show you it all separately. Because otherwise I'm going to be running out of space on this bloody workbench. So let me get over here for a second. Obviously they all come with lids as well, so we've got a brand spanking new Mark 7 lid. This is going to be interesting, we'll put that over here as well. And obviously once this is all I'll change the camera angle. Genuine Technic slip mat with what looks like the slip sheet. Cool, cool. Black 45 adapter, that's pretty cool. I like that. Straight away, guys, this feels as light as a sort of cheap to mid level budget turntable. So let's get that a little bit closer. Can you see that alright guys? And we're going to read all your comments after I've done this. I can briefly see it but because the camera's angled I've got to do this. Alright so I'm sure you'd rather see the turntable. So this is the moment of truth guys because I've not seen one of these in person either. Ooh, I've got to give them the juice. It does look quite tasty. That is just so light. Oh man, that, that, to be honest, that does look pretty sexy. <laughs> that does look pretty sexy. Right, let me just, let's get let's get this built up, and then I'll turn the camera around, and we'll go through. It. Ooh, looks, does feel good. Right, so first things first, let's get the platter on and off. Fact, get this out of the way. Cover for the platter, right? So, platter, slip mat, lid. So, anyway, guys, so brand spanking new Mark 7 lid. I'm going to keep that in its wrap because, of course, you no know, DJs don't really use them, but for the minute, I'm not going to take something out of a wrap if it's going to be a load of shit. Cables as expected, these are oh, these ain't even the same as the ones that the GR had. So genuine Panasonic cables, nothing spectacular. Head shell screws and, and bolts for the head shell, which we've got here. So genuine Technics head shell. Slightly different black fade with grey style lettering instead of the bright white that you used to get on the old, the old school Mark IIs. Um, obviously instructions and one sticker. So you that's a bit of a shame. I thought we were giving you two of mine for either side, but obviously not. So we'll go through all this in a minute. Um, power cable as well, nothing spectacular there. So we've got a standard IC kettle cable. Yeah, it's like a bloody Airfix kit. Let me quickly turn this camera around and show you what it's like as it is at the moment. Because this does look pretty cool, guys. Hang on. 
So, this is the 1210 Mark 7. This is the first time I've seen one in person. And to be fair, first glance at this, it does look really, really nice. Um, it's got a very stealthy style finish to it. Which, again, I'm a bit of a big fan of this. I quite like the look of it. It's just anything that's putting me off it is extremely light. Look, you can literally lift it up. I'll put it on my little finger. Yeah, it is that light. The feet on these look very similar to the Mark 2s. I think they may have changed them over from the GRs. They don't move as much neither. So that's a good thing. They had a big problem with them. The only thing that I've noticed before a lot of people reviewing these, or mentioning these, I should say, is the pop-ups. As you can see, there's no single recess section on them. So it is literally a click up and down. That's not actually as bad as what people are make them out to be. People say they're quite cheap. Yeah, it is. But... That's a, I prefer the old style. Start and stop assembly looks, well, apart from being slightly more rounded, I wouldn't be surprised if that's pretty much the same assembly, to be honest. Recess button is probably going to be the same with, the, with the, um, the shaft that goes down the middle, probably with diffuser paper. Narrower hole for the output. Yeah, nothing, nothing spectacular. All feels the same. Dip switches. So from what I'm under the impression of, which we'll find out once I set this up, you've got brake one and two. So there are two different types of brakes. I'd imagine one slowly starts it and the other one stops it quite quick. Torque settings, I would imagine, would be like you've got your Super OEM style quite hard and then the old original style. 78, so there's a, new, there's a hidden 78 mode where you can push both buttons down, but it doesn't happen unless you have that selected. Then you've got reverse mode as well. So reverse mode, again, I think you hit both buttons again. Platter spins round in reverse. You then got LED. So LED on this, which I think is quite a nice little feature. From what I've seen, it changes the standard LEDs on the running of this deck from red or blue. So yeah, I mean, if you the majority of people that I either do modifications for, they all go for blue LEDs. So here's a nice touch if you want to go for something different. The tone arm assembly itself, I mean, this, when I saw the GR arm assembly, again, it is identical. I can't see any difference between this and the GR. So all these people that are out there that decide to try and slate me and say, I don't know what I'm talking about. Guys, this looks identical. I'm sure the way it goes on, or where the cables are, is slightly different underneath and it hasn't got the base section the GR has, but the actual arm assembly itself looks the same. Um, it does feel a lot better. So this this could be a good thing. It's got it feels nice and smooth. The assembly that she does. Do you know what? I'm actually quite impressed with that. It doesn't feel as cheap as the GR. I just don't like this. But that does look good. Arm is rock solid. There's no movement really in the arm. It does move a tiny bit when you move it backwards and forwards. But again, who the hell's going to do that in a club? Right, the most important thing we all want to know, so reset button isn't an indented, it's actually just on or off of a single throw switch. Pitch control itself, still the standard plus and minus eight, but you've got your plus two on the top so you can double up to 16 plus and minus. Pitch control, guys, that feels beautiful. I'm just really hoping this is as good as it looks. Because so far, so good. Let's pop this back on the stand, hang on. So back on the stand, I'm going to turn the camera just slightly up so I can take a seat now. There's no point me slowly if I don't need to. So, so then peeps, here we got, there you are, 50 people, lovely, good to see this is spreading. So, let's do the first things first. Now I know we're all men and we all decide that we don't read manuals, you know, we don't need manuals because we're all fucking clever enough as we are. Let's do the other way. I always look at these now, because you never know what there is. If you plug it in as it is and blow the fucking thing up. So no, let's do it the other way. Let's go through the manual and see if there is any quick start guides or anything that needs to be done prior to just powering the bloody thing on, because you never know. So you've got a warranty card as standard, which you do with any, any sort of gear from brand new. There is literally just I think one sticker or two. One of the old school style Technic stickers, high quality one, we only get one for the front or whatever it's going to be for. Pretty cool, but it would have been nice to have two, one for either side, so it looks like I'm going to be making some decals at some point. And then we've got your manual. So, from what I've been reading online, this has actually been designed predominantly for DJs. So this manual's not really a, your typical audiophile 
unit. And it is all pretty well laid out, tells you everything. In fact, this is another nice idea for another plaque, actually. So, uh, head shell, stylus, how to put the cartridge together, running the slip mat. Slip sheets, there is a slip sheet in there, I'm right. Fitting the platter, putting the deck together. So, here we go. So, before fitting, remove the magnet cover from the turntable. Well, duh, because if you don't do that, it's, <laughs> you ain't going to be putting the platter on, because the platter itself... Well, the platter itself, guys, I'm pretty impressed with this. It, it looks lovely, as you'd imagine. This text platter is lovely and shiny. Obviously, you're not going to get any better than new, are you? That is beautiful. Lovely and clean. Comes with a plastic cover on the back. It's all rubberized as well, like the other ones are. It feels slightly different. Uh, let's get the cover off. Cool, the magnet is completely different. So this is going to be interesting. We'll get this on. Being nice and gentle. The first thing I've noticed on this is you do get slight movement. I don't know if you guys can see that from where you are. Let's get the camera. Hang on. Two seconds. There is slight movement on this. If I put my hand and you look at the corner of the platter, I'm spitting on the turntable. You see that? That's, without, that's not even hardly any pressure on that, so that's the first thing I've spotted. Whether that makes any difference whatsoever, I don't know just yet. But, platter's on. So, back up here you go. Hopefully you can all still hear me. So, platter is on. That's that done. First step. Then we've got fitting the turntable. Slowly set this turntable on the centre spindle. Be careful when handling the turntables, it's heavy. Well, it's fucking ain't heavy. It's heavy with the platter on. Keep your fingers from being caught. For the fuck are you going to catch your fingers? It's not standing. <laughs> Wipe off any fingerprints or dirt of a soft cloth. Okay. Fitting the slip mat. It even gives instructions, guys, on fitting the slip mat. Well, this is going to be interesting. Should we fit the slip mat, people? Let's fit it, shall we? Being, of course, being very careful in case it is a load of old turd. So we've got, with a brand new Technic slip mat, they have included a slip sheet. So you've actually got the slip sheet they used to give on the 5Gs originally, so the slip sheet is there. Quite a nice slip mat, very thin, so it's designed more for scratcher, I would have thought. Yeah, it's quite slippery. So for anybody out there that is deciding to use these purely for mixing, I think we'll do a bit of a test starter and use my slip mats and see the difference. I mean, I probably wouldn't recommend using the slip sheet unless you are just a scratcher. Because again, the majority of these manufacturers now, they push the, the emphasis on DJs that scratch and not DJs that mix. This is why I get so pissed off with the whole digital pitch saga and why I have my input with it and why people then disagree. But this is what I'm talking about. That is too, way too slippery. The design it for people that scratch. So, the slip mat is now on, so this can be moved out of the way. The decals in this can all go over here for the minute. I'm not going to throw them around, just move them as they are. Put these over here, nice and safe out of the way on my other desk. Right, then what else have we got? Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Tension, when performing scratching, including reverse play, use a cartridge and stylus for DJs. Well, that's a no-brainer. Attaching the balance weight. Attach the weight into the rear of the tone arm. Where else are you going to fucking put it? <laughs> I'm just going to leave it on the middle of the platter. So, let's get this out. This takes me back to when I got the parts for the GR. Right, so let's just get that on there. In fact, no, we'll take the blue block off. See, the manual's already messed up with that. The manual doesn't say about removing the black blue block, even though it's obvious. Some people, I bet, would be calling me going, I can't get it on. So that's there. Goes on nice and smooth. Pushed it all the way on. Let's get it all the way on there. The inside of the weight is greased. No shit, my hand feels it as well. Um, let's just get that and put it on the three point thing all the way through just to get it there. To remove the turntable. To remove the turntable. To remove the turntable, as shown in the figure on the right, <laughs> set your fingers in the two holes on the turntable, hold the spindle down and remove the turntable upward. Well, this just makes you laugh. It's not remove the turntable, is it? It's remove the fucking platter. 
Connections and installation. Turn off all the units, disconnect the AC mains from the socket before making any connections. Blah, 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 blah. Right. How to fit the dust cover. Adjusting the height to make the units horizontal. So that's obviously for the, the feet. Uh, they've got you on here. Actually, it's pretty good. They've got on here horizontal balance, stylus, stylus pressure, anti-skating. How to adjust it all. Tone arm height. Adjusting the height of the arm control ring. Arm lift weight. Turn the arm rest to the clamp. Fix it with the clamp arm. LED color settings. This is what I was talking about. So they actually have gone in depth to tell you exactly what you have to do to get this deck spot on. So they've got an operations guide in the corner, which I, I love stuff like this. This is just me in pure geek mode, guys. So operations allow for any decolor change and reverse playback settings uh, 78 rpm torque settings and brake settings uh, turn the unit off and pull off the power plug just as desired by setting the switches with a fine phillips screwdriver head you see now i wouldn't do that i'll be taking it off but there we go uh, right so let's just double check and make sure that all these settings are actually correct shall we so I'm not going to do what they tell me to do this with a fine Phillips screwdriver because to me that's very bodge. I'd rather take the time and lift the platter off the turntable. There we go. Move that out of the way. Lift it off. Move it out of the way for the minute and have a good look. So, according to the instructions on here, everybody, it says on here. So, the first things first, the switch is this way. So, let me get the camera and I'll do this with you because it's going to be the obvious thing to do because otherwise you're not going to be seeing what I'm doing. Let me quickly get my other camera mount if I can find it. Give me just a second guys, hang on. Right, so I've got another camera mount. What I'll do is I'll set this up. Just do it on the workbench. Let's get this on the fucking workbench. Hang on. There we go, right. If I'd have thought of this earlier, I would have taken the time and done this. So massive respect to everybody that's watching this. I don't know who is or what, but I really appreciate you all taking the time to watch this. I know you're all as interested as I am because you're all hardcore techniques lovers. Right, let's get this on here. Let's have a look, shall we? So, bearing in mind, guys, I can't see your messages. So, I'll be done to answer them all after I've gone through this. So, if I get any problems or you can't hear me, do please let me know. Then I presume. Can you all see the dip switches? I'm presuming you can. Yeah, because you can all see that. So, guys, these dip switches, according to the manual on here, which you can all see here on the manual. So, if I'm looking at it from this way, on is this way, off to the right. Okay. So it says on here to turn the unit off and pull the power plug, blah, 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 blah. So LED color settings allows you to select red or blue for the color of the strobe light, speed select buttons, pitch range, and the reset LED. That's pretty cool. So you don't just get one option with one thing. This is actually does everything on here, which is quite a nice little touch. So when it's on off, it's on the factory setting as red. So at the moment it's on off. So we'll leave it on off for the minute because that is obviously the classic techniques and I prefer it in red anyway like that because it is originally a brand new unit, that's what it should be. And obviously you turn it to the left, you get it to blue. Reverse playback allows you to disable or enable reverse playback. Now this is all stuff that I am never ever going to use. But um, for the purpose of this, should we turn it on? So reverse enabled on will be to the left. We'll get my little pointer tool. This is going to be the better way of doing it. So reverse playback is number three. So we've got number three on here. Move it in here and turn it on. Nice and easy. So Phillips screwdriver would have hacked the shit out of that. So that's a good start. Right, 78 playback is turned off. I'm never going to use that. I haven't got anything that old to play in 78. I never bloody well will. Uh, torque settings allows you to select from four levels of strength to adjust the torque. That's four levels is there. This is pretty cool. So this looks quite confusing. So torque settings one, high to low. Fuck me, how the hell does this bloody work? So, <laughs> uh, right, okay. So one and two. So torque one, torque two. High is on and on. So I take it you've got torque one and torque two. When you turn them both on, they're on a high torque. 
low torque off and on. Oh, they, oh this, is, this is pretty cool. Factory setting on free, off and off. We'll leave them both as they are for the minute. So there's four different levels of torque. This is pretty cool, guys. This is this is pretty cool. Brake settings allows you to select from four levels of <laughs> four levels of brake to stop the turntable after start and stop is press. So off and on. Factory is off and off. Well, again, we'll leave that as it is. We'll play about with that a little bit later if we're all that bothered about it. Um, what else have we got on here? So playing records. Yeah, we know that already. How to reset? How to play in reverse? Um, pitch control. Maintenance, how to take care of it, how to repackage it, how to clean it. Lovely, right, okay. So, I think what we'll do now is put everything actually together and see what it's like. So, let me get this off this camera stand quickly, move this out of the way, put this back on here. You lot will get to see my ugly mug for a couple of seconds. We'll see just what this is like, and we'll get it plugged in. Let's see what all the fuss is about, shall we? Hang on a minute. So I've already got my mixer here. So what I've literally got to do now is put the platter carefully back on the deck. Cool. You feel that? It's got some good dampening though. Platter's on there. Plastic sheet. Slip mat, I've got a Concord here as well, which I'm going to put on. I've got an old school Concord Pro S Black, which is what I use for everything. So we'll get that on there. So this was brand new old stock, nice and tight. Lovely. Put the stylus cover up here so I don't bloody lose it. Just tip the car wheel. Right. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What else we got? Ah, well, let's just, just install everything as it is, okay? So. The cables it includes, let's get it all on here. I could use mine, but I'm not going to. Let's use everything that's included. This isn't like me. I usually like modern stuff, but this is the purpose of this video. Let's just get this done exactly as they give it to you. So I appreciate it's going to take me a little bit more time to get this all done, but it'll be worth it. So again... Rear of the unit, guys, you haven't actually seen this yet, and neither have I, so this is going to be interesting. It's quite hollowed out. So again, there's quite a lot of space underneath, as you can all see. Uh, power cable on the corner at an angle, that's quite a nice little touch. You've got the grounding connection there, looks like it's going to be hand tighted or screwdrivered on, which is a bit of a strange one. But there it is, quite small, with your two RCA points on there. Um, they haven't bothered with anything special like USB or anything like that to transfer your vinyl. They haven't bothered with anything like that. You don't need it. They kept it to basics of what Technics are renowned for, which is purely just, it's simple and it does the job. You need to bear in mind, when these turntables were first released, especially the Mark II, the 1200 Mark II, 79 when it was released, these were not predominantly designed as DJ turntables. They were purely audiophile, hi-fi style turntables, which they found out by mistake because of the pitch control was pretty bloody good for beat matching records. So... Let's get this on. So I can see what I'm bloody well doing would be a good start. And of course I'm going to regret this now because what I should have done was uh, put the ground cable on first. But there you go. That's always the way. So, ground cable. I hate these. I don't, they look just look cheap. But they, <laughs> I'm sure they're not. They just look cheap. Well, I've got to be honest, I prefer mine. It's like now, for example, it's fucking awkward trying to get your hands in to tighten the ground up. That's why they put the screwdriver point on. With the greatest respect, if you're in a club and you're in a dark club and you've got much space to move around on, that's pretty shit. So that's that. Cables are now in. We'll turn that round. Plug these into my mixer. No problem though, because this channel's got a fault on this one, so I'm just, <laughs> I can't bloody remember what channel it is. I think it's channel one that's got the okay. So it's this mixer I've had for quite a while. I love the old school UMX. One of my favourite mixers this was back in the day. 
so that's that. Uh, power cable, again, like I've just said, I'm gonna use everything, everything that comes with this. Uh, for those that are watching, I'm just gonna say hello for a couple of people while I'm doing this. So we've got out to Joel Palomera, Pete Milton, out to Mr. Parallel Motion as well. Good to see you watching, mate, saying, did Technics give you a prizzle? No, they didn't. I actually bought this with my own money so I could review this for you because so many people have been asking for a comparison video and no bugger has spent the time to do it. They've been too lazy, too lazy. It takes two seconds. You gifted these turntables probably so many times. It takes two minutes to set a couple of decks up and give everyone honest information. And like I said, a lot of people are sponsored by them. And they're giving them, they've got to give a good, honest, they've got to give their own example of an idea for it. So, right, that's in. Holy God, guys, this is the, this is the moment of truth turning the deck on. Um, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit excited about it. Because it's like I say, it's the first time I would have turned a proper brand spanking new Technics on after so many years. I mean, I've, I've worked on a lot of new Technics a long time ago. But nothing's going to be doing this. Uh, what am I forgetting? Oh yeah, there's the adapter as well. We'll put, we'll put that on, might as well, eh? Not doing the arm, is it? I like that. I do love this. The old black adapters. That is pretty tasty. So far, I'll be honest, peeps. So far, I'm liking the look of it. It looks the part. So I'm not going to bull anybody else. Like I said before, if this turntable is genuinely good, because I've paid 800 quid of my own money to do this review, if it's good, it's coming over me, and I'll get another one at some point towards Christmas. If not, it goes back in its box very carefully. I phone the shop and say, it's a piece of shit. Take it back. This isn't being endorsed by Panasonic or Technics Panasonic at all. This is because of I'm doing this purely for you guys. Because I'm good like that. <laughs> right. Okay. So power is on. Oh yeah. We have power, guys. Um. So first things first, I've actually noticed with this deck. So obviously you've got your red LEDs, all well and good. Nice standard, it's very nice and bright. Buttons are nice and clicky. First thing I've noticed with regards to the pitch control, obviously because it has got the reset in the pitch. Um, the reset button itself, the LED won't go on until you push the reset. So for those of you that use Mark M3Ds, Mark 3s, whatever you've got from the newer series, You'll all know the lights don't turn on when you go over green unless you hit the reset button. This is exactly the same. There's no difference with this. But the LED for the pitch, I don't know if you guys can see this from there, the LED for the pitch control is red. So I'm presuming when you change the LEDs to blue underneath the platter, it'll change the pitch LED to blue as well. So that's a little bit. I would have preferred that in green, but that's just me. I'm presuming the X2 is. Yet the X2 is also in red. And I'll take it the pop-up's going to be in blue. Or white, even. <laughs> in blue. Yeah, you see, feels, that feels very cheap. But I can live with that, as long as the pitch is good. <laughs> because, you know, at the end of the day, if, as long as you can see it, it's not the brightest of light, I will be honest. But that's probably just enough to, to do it. It's got a good spread, but it only really goes out to about there. Which is a bit of a shame. Whereas mine, you turn it on, they fucking explode up the other end of the wall. <laughs> so, right, one, two, three, four. Uh, right, let's have a look. So, let's have a bit of a play about with this and see. So, this is the first time powering on to the new MK7, to the Mark 7. Oh, yeah. Break in start and stop, very similar. I don't take it while I've done this at default. It's pretty much the same as the original, obviously, because the original Mark II, you could calibrate and do what you want. But that's quite nice. Let's see if the pitch control is actually okay. There was a lot of horror stories with these turntables when they, the first bunch of people got these from there being a dead spot in the pitch between plus six and onwards and minus six and onwards. Um, also, there was fluctuations in the platter with wow and flutter really bad and warped platters. So hopefully this deck is a little bit different. So straight away from, from, the, from the world goal, I can tell you right now, this deck has got exactly the same issue as the ones before, because I can tell you now. Give me just quickly take the camera again and I'll show you. 
If you look very carefully at the platter, I'm going to hold this still. Can you see it moving up and down? Now that isn't actually a warped platter. Because if you look, look at the line on the platter from that angle, it's not moving up and down. You'll see, without the light on, look at the way it goes. The actual strobe dots are machined incorrectly. Can you see the bottom dot? If you look, hang on. Choose a bit of, a bit of this. Right, so look at the bottom, the bottom dot, guys, yeah? So the very bottom one. I'll show you as I'm doing it. So watch it, yeah? It's going up, down, up, down. You see that? I'm moving it with my hand at the same time. See that? Look at the bottom of the straw. It might become clearer actually with the LED. So again, not as easy to spot when you're looking like that, but it is definitely there. So that's that's a good start. So that's exactly the same. <laughs> that's the ones I've seen before. So again, speeds, reverse play. Is it turned off? Have I done it like that? Have you got to stop it and both buttons to do it? I can't bloody remember how you do it. Was it hold it down? No. Oh, hang on a minute. This is why I don't like they put extra features on that you're never going to use. The reality is, guys, I am never, ever, ever going to use reverse play, but I just want to see it work like everybody else does. So adjustment tone, I'm height, lift, torque setting, brake setting, allows you to say with auto play off and on. Uh, do it, press start and stop remove, low Q, playing records, maintenance, why? Oh, here we go. Enable reverse playback, press the speed select button on 3 or 33 or 45 and start and stop while the turntable is rotating. Ah, that's a bit. You see, that's a bit shitty, guys. So... That's a bit shitty. So this is now in reverse mode, guys, which is all wow and good. First techniques to actually have one built in without using the reverse play kits. But did you see how you actually got to turn that on and off? So obviously it's start and stop, 33 and 45. Now I would have just thought you push both down together. The old original reverse play kits would literally push both buttons down. It would activate and deactivate. With this, you've got to hold all three down. So three fingers. Yeah, look, three fingers at the right point. So hold 40, 33 and 45 and push start and stop. Now, I don't like that. But again, like I explained to you, I wouldn't be using it. The old school trick for pitch bend propelled on the 33 and the 45 still works, which is pretty cool. Right, let's have a look at everything else. So... Tone arm clip, well it's a standard tone arm clip from a 1210 full stop. Torque on the platter. Ah, they have done it. So, my modifications that I enable remove the problem that they've also removed. So, you'll notice that when you touch down on the platter, it doesn't jump. It's classed as cogging. That was a big problem with the M5Gs. That could be the saving grace for this turntable. The pitch control, if we hold the reset, turn it off, plus and minus 16, we'll turn it on basic. So let's see the strobe dot. So 3.3 3 plus 3.3. 3. Yep. 6.4, eh? Okay, so 6.4 is about there, I'd say. Yep, can't fault that. Back to zero. Let's see if it is smooth at zero. 
it is, yep. Yeah. Out of zero, minus 3.3. So again, minus 3.3, that's at three, and that is still. So plus 3.3. Slightly over. See now, plus 3.3 is nearly at 4. Minus 3.3. Stopping is at 3. You can. This is not me bullshitting. You can all see this. So when I used to say to people before about these strobe dots, and people would say they're not. They, they should be stopping at, in out of factory as they should. This is a classic example. This one doesn't. Okay, and then obviously back up to zero. If we reset it at zero, it's exactly the bloody same, which is great. Right. Well, this is a good start, isn't it? <laughs> so, I think the next thing to do on here is do a quick test. So, I'm going to do a quick scratch test. I'm going to put this camera back up on my stand, get a scratch record on, and we'll test it out and see what this is like. Once that's been done, I'll grab a Mark II that I've got over here. I was going to do a freshly serviced Mark II. Change my mind now. I'm going to use a 1210 Mark II which is in right battered shitty state that I know barely works, that I'm going to plug in and we're going to compare the pitch control on an old knackered Mark II that probably has never ever been serviced compared to this. And let's be honest, before I do it, this is a lovely looking turntable, guys. And I really do hope it's as good as it looks for mixing and scratching because it does look nice. And I'll be honest, if it is good, I'll be taking it home. It is very nice. So let's get this back on here. And uh, I'm going to quickly go grab, actually before I grab it, let's do, let's do the test with the mixer. So you guys can all see that, can't you? You're not really too bothered about me clicking away anyway. So that's that, turn the mixer on. These Euro mixers were fantastic back in the day. Amplifier. on it as well. Mm. Right, okay. Okay, let's quickly get these records. So Please reverse the camera mode. Yeah, but this, you don't understand. I, I can't. This is on Facebook. If you want to see this properly, I'll be uploading a decent video a little bit later. Again, guys. Um, A, B, what we got? There we go.
can agree the tracking's really good. Um, Absolutely fine. So far, my scratch test is passed. I'm happy with that. Pitch control, guys, is the next thing. Everyone's saying about it. So, this is the moment of truth. This is pretty much what we're all we're bothered about now. Is the next bit I'm going to do. If this does what I want, it goes on. If it doesn't, then it was the biggest waste of £800 pound loan to man. Let's go grab this 1210. So what's everybody's thoughts so far, guys? What's all your thoughts as it stands at the moment? Personally, I think it looks really nice. I think they've done a good job for the way it looks. The plastic, the base is very plasticky, I will be honest, but if it's good, it doesn't matter, does it? Um, I don't know, free. Like I said, this mix has got a little bit of a problem. I only used to use this for testing. Yeah, it's a battered Technics, this one, as you can all see. Ground cable's knackered. Pitch control is screwed as well, I think. Armrest is broken, using an old Stanton as well. Just want to see. The old, uh, the old Faithful's light, so. Old school. Let's grab a slip mat. What I'm gonna also gonna do is take the slip mat and slip sheet off and put my own one. Yeah, there's always no what was on this filled out the videos, isn't there? It does wind me out. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, guys. Unless you actually physically have one of these in front of you, I don't see how you can all judge. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm doing this for you, for you guys. So records I'm using, I've got organ donors, and I've got uh, Clark King's deal with this, and UK hard style remixes by Cali and Juice, all the usual. Um, so... Organ donors 99.9. We'll deal with this. Now I used to mix these two tracks in all the time I used to play out. I'm not going to use headphones. Just want to see how good this is. So first things first, let's get let's get this on here.
Well, so far, so far, guys, it's a little bit fidgety. Best thing to do is get this track. Headphones, it's fucking ridiculous. It's all right doing it with that, but if you want to hear it done properly, actually see it done properly, let's do it with my headphones. Let's get my headphones on the go. Hang on. This is the only thing I'm bothered about, guys, like you lot are, so. Okay. Let's have a look then, guys, and see what all the fuss is about with this, shall we? started skipping unbelievable oh my fucking days right let's turn it around hang on oh my god that is sod's law <laughs> To be honest guys, that's not bad. I'm going to try it one more time with that.
I'll be honest, they're tight. They're actually pretty fucking tight. Um, they're really, really good. I'm going to try it again. That's why I try a different track. Hang on. Again. Love them, love them. If this is, <laughs> I literally minimal movement. Right, someone's asked me on their player record at thirty three. Well, I can if you really want me to, mate. Hang on, let's see if I've got one that plays at thirty three. <laughs> I don't know if this is. That's forty five as well. Was the other side of that a forty five or thirty three? I can't be bloody enough. Right. 99.9 to 33. The game's on full and that is on low. This is ridiculous. Sod's law. Hang on. Yeah, the bloody... I knew the output on one of these wasn't right. Hang on, guys. Phono 2. 
That's better. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. I couldn't bloody hear anything. Established that these actually do mix how they should do, and uh, I'm actually very, very pleasantly surprised. The only problem now that I've got is uh, I can't get an £800 refund because <laughs> it's going to be going home. So let's try another track, something a little bit different, shall we? Um, what else have we got here that I can try? So now I've only brought a couple of hard dance records with me. Let's have a look. <clears throat> In fact, you know what, we'll try mixing into the other ones. My deal with this track is actually a pretty fucking cool tune. Um, put this onto the other deck because we know that's not the one we're bothered about. Such a tune, guys.
You've got to be fucking kidding me. So the bearings on that deck are absolutely shagged. That's why it keeps bloody skipping. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That is fucking ridiculous. How can anyone play a track like that? Yeah, I'm a fan. Guys, look, this is fucking ridiculous. So, this deck, I should have really, I should have planned this one through, really. So, that deck is completely screwed. Um, look. I think we can pretty much laugh that off. Um, yes is the honest answer to anybody out there that is contemplating spending a shit ton of money on a pair of these turntables. Let me take this bracket off again. Right, sit down again and be completely honest with you all. So for anybody out there, let's take this fucking turntable out of the equation because I'm getting pissed off with this now. So I've used the turntable that needs servicing to do a demonstration, which when I actually tried it out, was working okay. So that's sod's law. That's what you get. Let's move out of the way. Put this back, put this back. Right. So, everybody. Would I recommend the 1210 Mark 7? for DJing and for scratching. Honest answer, which I'm quite pleasantly surprised with, is yes, I actually would. Um, like I said to people before, I hold no judgment on this gear until it's in front of me. I do this with a lot of turntables that I test because, because something's got a high torque motor or digital pitch, nine times out of 10 with all this stuff that comes out of the super, like the super the hand pin motor, for example, super OEM, the pictures are all the same, nicked from basically from a stand, and they're all from the hand pin. So I never really rate them very highly. They're great if you're scratching, but not very good when you're mixing because of the pitch control and the way that the motor goes to the pitch. Not my cup of tea. This is completely different. Um, where they've hit the nail on the head as far as mixing is concerned with that pitch control is the cogging. The biggest issue that I had with the M5G was cogging. Um, I used to find if I used to move 
the pitch control slider just a fraction it was too much or too little but the minute you do what a normal DJ does which is either touch the record and push it forward um, it would fight back straight away to the speed because obviously the speed of the turntable when you move it say plus two and you try and slow the turntable down the computer basically the, the, the deck itself's going hang on a minute you're trying to slow me down it shouldn't be at this speed it should be at plus two but it's trying to fight your finger to go back up to that speed and exactly the same when you try and speed the record up you're trying to do that and it's running at a slower speed it's going to try and automatically correct itself now the m5g in general is a lovely looking deck it's my favorite looking deck out of all of the original old school Technics models, so the 1200 and 1210. My favorite looking deck of all the LEDs, etc. It looks lovely. But the biggest downfall was that, was the pitch control and the way the motor handled it. Um, unfortunately, that was the biggest downfall and I corrected that for quite a few people and they're happy as a pig and shit of it, to be honest. It's exactly the same, if I'm honest with you. Uh, the way that the pitch control controls itself on this, with the, with the platter itself is exactly the same. There are slight differences between it. The pitch itself does feel extremely tight. So I'm very, very surprised. Um, so it hasn't come out of the same factory. We all know that, obviously being Panasonic. I know these decks are made in Malaysia, which is a little bit shocking. I wasn't expecting anything fantastic, considering the fact that all the original ones weren't. Um, build quality in general, I can overlook it. I mean, it is a nice turntable. It functions very, very well. The pitch control slider itself feels gorgeous. I'm not even going to bullshit you. It feels absolutely gorgeous. Um, slowing a track down. I mean, I can, I can show you. Look, I'll actually show you. There's slowing a track down. Whereas before, you'd hear it going like this. You'd hear like that. You slow this down. so smooth and fluid it's almost I mean I wouldn't use the slip mats that come with the decks that's a given they're more for scratch use I wouldn't even use just the top layer the slip mat itself that plastic sheet I'd literally just get them if it was me I'd keep them in the bag and I'd sell them on eBay <laughs> that's what I'd do they go they go second hand 50 quid a pop I would sell them on eBay or keep them on your wall or keep them in the box in case you change your mind and get yourself some nice thick felt mats. And that's not a sales pitter patter for the stuff that I do, but I will tell you now, I'm using my mats and they're a damn sight better than what the ones are gonna be like. Because I can tell you right now that if I switch this over and put the Technics mat back on, and I'll put it on with the slip mat and without it, try it with the slip mat first, look. So, do it with the slip mat and with the originals. Uh, the original one, put my scratch record on. on these are not as good as the originals. I know you could really tap the tops and you could hear it. This is quite prominent. Using it out for live gigs might be a bit of a problem, especially if you haven't got a well isolated booth with the right feet, etc. and do what you're going to do. I'd spend a lot of money on the isotone feet if it was me. <laughs> funny because I, I actually prefer mixing on thicker mats and scratching on thicker mats it just doesn't feel right let's try it without the scratch mat try it with just a single mat right Christ it's like cardboard <laughs> no I don't like it I don't like it no like it no like it don't like that at all Right, 
Right, now we've done the basics of this, should we see what the difference is now with the torque? I'm going to flip the switch and switch underneath the platter and see what the torque settings are like if I actually switch it. So let's do that. In fact, it's quite handy. They're right with one thing. You can't actually get to the switches without taking the platter off. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to use my little pointer tool. Now they were saying there's what? There was four different modes of torque. So let's see what the second mode of torque is. And I'll go through all your messages and things in a minute. But I, uh, honestly, I'm very surprised. I'm quite happy now. Inwardly, guys, I'm smiling, but at the same time, I'm not because they're not. I'm not going to be sending it back. <laughs> it's the truth. So, um, torque settings. Right, allows you to select for four levels of strength to adjust the torque. So high is one. Torque one on and on. So the two that are here for torque, one on and two on. So one on, two on. So now we've got the higher level of torque enabled. This is the highest level of torque. So in theory, in fact, yeah, because you're looking to see, right, let's see what this looks like inside again. So for those of you that haven't actually seen me do this from start, Christ, that is, that is on there. <laughs> that is on there. I give it, Jesus Christ, I give it that. It's, it does lock down. So it is literally, let me just turn this around, I'll give it to the camera again. So those of you that haven't seen it can watch it again. Hang on. Here we go. Let's show you again. It is literally just a solid lump with dip switches. Cordless motor. Service only. This is going to be interesting. So there's going to be something that you can plug into that and go through a computer. That is literally all you have. There is nothing else underneath. Let's put this back on again. So for those that missed it, I know some people are like, oh, they've just joined them, I haven't seen it. So that's fair enough. But it's quite interesting, nonetheless, if you haven't seen it. So anyway, right, the, the talk settings have now been changed. What's all this? That's a scratch marks, is it? No, it's weird. Right, so this is now the high talk setting. To me, you can feel a difference. That does feel more of a more firmer. I think for those of you that are more heavy-handed out there that like putting a lot of pressure on the platter, or even saying that, no, for people that want to be gentle, but they also know there's enough power for the motor to not to stop. I think I'd probably end up using this. Although the higher torque motor section actually saying, uh, hang on. <laughs> I tell you what, it is literally the slightest little touch with it, just the lightest bit of skin in your finger. It slows down. That's going to be good fun for mixing. Right, okay. Okay, then so what are the other modes for the torque then? So, uh, high two is off one, on two. So let's do this one then. So, off one, what was it? Off one, on two. That's already on, so sweet. This is the second, oh, what marks on the platter? Right, that is probably how I'd have it. So the second to highest torque setting. It's a nice all-round feel. It's quite firm, but it's almost quite... It's, it, it's hard to describe. You need to try it, to be honest. But I would have it. I'd say for those of you that have never used these or you're just getting on the techniques, you could use the default setting absolutely fine. If you're just jumping from Super OEM decks and you want to see what the whole techniques thing is all about and you're getting yourself a set of the new Mark 7s, then I'd go for just go stick it on the highest torque and see how you get along. You may very well just love it as it is. Me, second to highest. I'll be willing to try that. I'll probably try that later on tonight, if I'm honest. There isn't really any major judder. In fact, actually, there is with this. On the higher settings, the motor judders. Um, lowest off on. So on one, off two. 
on one, off two. This is the lowest setting. Yeah, see that's like. <laughs> You see now, when, yeah, when the boat is at higher torque, that cogging issue that they claim to have removed is pretty visible. So they've removed it at the default and the lower setting. So if you want something that's not going to wham back in your face the minute you touch the record like you do with the M5Gs, I would avoid any of the higher, the higher settings. Okay, I'm glad I spotted that. I would personally stick to either low or default. Judging from how this is, I'll stick it on its default setting. So off one, on two. On two. That's better. Right, so brake settings. Brake on this looks standard like you just find with any old 1200 that needs the brake adjusting because a lot of people find they brake and obviously move backwards and you can calibrate that yourself. Personally, I wouldn't have it so it spins way the world backwards because you're going to run into problems and that can cause some problems as well. Uh, right, so brake settings are standard. You've got off and off. So both of them are off the standard. When you hit it, it slowly, slowly goes down. Uh, brake at the highest is one off, two on. So... One off, two on. That's that. So this is the highest break. That's pretty fucking cool. So if you guys can see that on the video, I take it you can. That's what I have that on. You can have it, uh, break settings off and on. Lowest on and on. I wonder how bloody low that is then. So break on and on. With both the brakes turned on, it's very slow. Okay, I know it's had it on as high brake off and on, off one, on two. That's lovely. Right, okay. So that's the torque sweat settings done. LEDs will be the next thing, guys. Let's check out the LEDs. So as you've all seen, they're red from standard. You can see it by looking at the on-off strobe. You've got 33 and 45 also in red. And obviously the uh, the target or the pop-up light is in white. So that's going to be interesting to see in the dark. The one thing we haven't tested yet is the obviously the plus, the plus two for the plus and minus 16% pitch. I ain't going to bother using that with mixing. I've never found any use, any reason to use that for mixing. I always find plus and minus eight of any style I've ever mixed is absolutely fine. But we'll have a look at that on the strobe in a minute. But first of all, let's just check over these LEDs. So to change the LED color, blue, so red is off and blue is on. That's easy enough. So you've got one switch. Lovely. Lovely and easy. So you've got blue and blue. That's pretty cool. I actually quite like it in blue, if I'm honest. What do you think, guys? Blue or red? What would you go for if you had it? Because it's a bit of a new, it's a new thing, it's a, it's a newer model. Maybe put it on blue or keep it original. Go for red. I quite like it either way. I'm quite impressed with that. What else have we got? What else have we got here? So next question is, I'm going to go through your messages quickly and then we'll go through and see if there's any questions you guys have actually got. I'll do it while I'm on here with you. So let's have a quick look, guys. Hang on. Uh, let's go way back up on all these messages. Buzzy, there's quite a few of you. There's still a lot of you watching now. So uh, Mark Hardy, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you on Saturday when you come up. Uh, James McMillan, uh, 800 quid and it comes in kit form. <laughs> Lee Price, laugh out loud, say it, don't spray it. So I spat on the deck. Mr. Twiglet, well that's not good, must have been the platter. That movement isn't good at all, that's on the platter. Lee Price, well to be fair, they give you instructions and now it comes out how to out a condom. <laughs> Danny Lewis, watching that movement reminds me of the play that the PLX 500s had. We'll say no movement with the PLS 1000, so it's odd. 
Nigel Walker, yep. Pete Milton, top man fan. Damn, can't watch this watch later. Joel, I can't wait to get my Mark IIs over to you. A good service. 30 years and still going strong. Wouldn't change them for now. Sweet. You will want to use these then. Uh, Mark Parallel Motion did technically give you a Prezi. I've already gone through that. Mr. Matt Smith, one half of the Acid Brother, saying bonjour. Mark Singleton saying hi, Jay. Hello, Mark. Out to Vinny saying hi, Jay. Hi, Vinny. Out to Nigel saying hi, Jay. Hi, Nigel. Uh, Paul, did you only get one deck? Yes. Well, why would I spend £1,600 of my own money on a pair of them when I need to test one of them out first? The, I'll go through that in a second again. Uh, Jason Watson, got to be honest, I'm not, I'm not a fan of the way the back of the deck looks with the section missing for the cables. think they should have made a cover for the back. There's, to be fair, yeah, I mean, if you're in battle style, I think the table, the cable, the cable's going, not a big fan. I mean, they're only going to get caught, and the way the angles are, I don't know. It's a bit new, but not my cup of tea neither. Uh, Jason, again, what for the target pop-up light, it will be clear in the dark. No shit. I totally agree with that. <laughs> That's a bit obvious. Anything, any LED is brighter in the dark. To me, that just seems a bit cheap, though. I mean, it would so it sounds clunky as well. Like a cheap spring-loaded LED. What else have we got? Uh, Russell, it's a setting on under the platter. That was the reverse. I remember reading that, mate. Let's take my glasses off. I can't Kevin Boyle, I think you have to set up the reverse. That was a reverse, did it in the end. Paul, Mr. F, a minge. <laughs> Russell again, oh no, it's not. Christian Rosex, please reverse camera mode. Again, I can't do that. Uh, Ollie, I've seen another review and they said there was a resonance issue. Yep, you would have seen the one with uh, Mojax. Uh, Ollie again, get in the mix, Jay. That will be the proof of the pudding, which I did. Daryl, hey mate, saying looks pretty decent, mate. Uh, Stephen saying overpriced, that's up to you, whether you think. Personally, yes, they are fucking expensive, but in comparison to Super OEM pitch controls, I can tell you right now, this is the best one that I have used. And I'm not going to ball, this genuinely is. It's a lot of money, though, for what it is. Uh, Robert Nickel, it's not looking too bad at the minute. Jason Watson, deck is fine and it was always going to be. It's lighter because of modern materials, otherwise going to be standard 12. Ten. No, Jay, it's not true. This, this isn't true. There's always somebody that has to go a step further. This isn't true. There are bits on this deck that I can tell you now. If I was looking at build quality over performance of pitch and over performance of arm, I wouldn't be going for this. I'd be going for the Reloop. I'd be going for the Denim. I'd be looking at any other deck other than the Technics. But because this is Technics and because it has the accurate pitch control, even though it's digital, digitally controlled, this is very, very nice. But there are things on this deck which could have been made a lot better. One starting with the base. I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. They either skimp and go for cheaper and charge a large amount of money because it's just got the word Technics and it's a 1210 and they market it towards DJ. So DJs that obviously are the old faithful are naturally going to want a pair of these buy them and see for themselves, but I would have gone for a better base. Uh, Nigel does look cheap to be fair. Yeah, some bits do, but I'll be honest, I, I like the way it looks. I actually do like the way, anything I'm not a massive fan of is the type over the top section on the arm. Uh, what else have we got? Mark again, looks good, scratch is good, does the pitch lock in a mix, but I like I said, a very solid belt deck. It's it's cleanly built, it's cleanly laid out, it's no bells and whistles, it says what it does what it says on the tin, it does work, it scratches well, tracks very nice, everything on it is smooth. The only things I don't like on it is the base, the top section locking pins where the pivot on the bearings are on the tone arm, and obviously the uh, pop-up light. So they're the things I don't like. Uh, Russell's gone Cali and Juice, and Paul's gone 99.9. .9. Everyone knows these tunes if you're into your hard dance, which is awesome, I know you boys are. Uh, this is partly why I've done this review, actually, Russell, because I knew you'd watch it, obviously, because you've got Mark 7 as well. I thought I'd do it on some hard dance and see what this like to mix them. Christian Brown's got his tag, Jamie Gardner, by the looks of things. Uh, Mark Hardy, shame it's not the build quality of Mark 2. Yes, that is a big shame. The top feels very strange. It's like a mattified finish, very rub not rubbery, but you get the feeling if you've got dirty hands or you hold your fingers on them for too long, they're going to... Um, they're going to attract a lot of dirt and you can feel it crumpling in your fingers. Well, so we got here Jim Nixon saying, hi, mate. How are you finding it? Uh, yep, really good, mate. Uh, Jim's going to get nothing wrong here. Sweet. It's 100 cent in the mind, I swear. No, no, and no. Right now, Jim, I can tell you right now, and it's anybody that's used the GR or can give you any familiarities with a GR. The GR 
has, was never ever designed for DJ use. Now, as far as them bringing out a silver version and then obviously a black version, it was not. It was more of a market employee. These Panasonic, when they do techniques with this, they've already announced, even after they started doing them, it was never designed for DJ use. It was audio file use only. It's expensive. It's different build quality. Now, what they should have done was taken all the build quality of the GR and incorporated it in the Mark 7. So what a good mod to do would be to grab a GR and basically change things over for the pop-ups, etc., modify it and change a few bits. I think if you could get a GR base, put up a Mark 5 or Mark 2 arm inside it and uh, do a bit of modification work with the base, I think you'd have pretty much the best of the best of a hybrid turntable. That is something I'll look into doing. It's going to cost a lot of money, but I will look into doing it. Um, Russell's got, I agree. Uh, Jim, again, I've both GRs and 1200s from 81. That's great, but they both act differently. Um, I can honestly tell you that, and you know that too, because you've got both. Um, Russell, try off record in 33, which I did, and they're both great for mixing. Uh, Lee, they seem to hold nicely. They do, and I'll go through that in a minute. Jim, I have had no issues whatsoever, no click in the slider. That's the only thing I can't feel. Again, depending on how that slider's been designed, there may very well be a hole in there. So you can actually um, put a ball bearing in with a, with a thing. I might even look. I might even look at that. Mix 1 in 30 from which I did. Christian's going looking good so far. John Plunkett, when are you getting a pair, Neil? Uh, Lee's gone. See if you can get them to hold both tunes in for a while. Track length and show us how they hold. Well, I've done that. Uh, again, we've got Bosch Bosch. I, I can never say your name because you keep bloody changing it. Uh, Lee, again, happens laughing. Oh, I did a large one the other day and I hadn't set it in booth out. Well, that was my mixer. The reason the output was dodgy on the back, it's got a dodgy output switch from line to phone on the back of that mixer. Got it cheap. Can't complain, really. Uh, Tune Man takes me back. It's bound to be one of the nucleus ones I had. Uh, Pop Poppy looking like the legend lives on. I'll be honest, I am impressed. It is a nice deck. Uh, Nigel again, hats off to the old deck. And then why no refund? Well, like I explained before, the why no refund was, there's two options that's going to happen. Either it goes back for a refund because it's a load of crap, or it's really good and I keep it, which we'll go through after I finish doing this. Uh, sorry, I just stopped driving. Well, bloody watch the video. <laughs> Paul Evo, out to you, mate. Same tune. Russell's going to unbox his Mark 7s again. Good. You can mix on them. I don't see what the problem is. I like the look of them. I like the feel of them. Uh, Jim, so you a fan, Jay? Yes, 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 and yes. For the first time, I am actually a fan of a deck with digital pitch control. Uh, Paul Evo, you may start doing live stream, Jay. I fascinate with the tunes, mate. Let us all hear your DJ Nitro once a week. <laughs> it may, it's just too busy. Too busy. If I get time, I'll do it over Christmas. Uh, John Plunkett, time to take the Mark 7 apart to get familiar with the internals. Um... Not really. I could take it apart and have a look if you really all really want me to. But I'm not really that bothered about it at the moment. I've done this so I can review and actually see what the, whether the thing's worth getting or not. Joe, uh, can't wait to watch this full video later. Uh, another one saying Hannah Sod's Law. Russell saying, are you doing a frequency test? Don't need to. What's no point? Audio seems quite clear. There was a bit of a hum on the top end. That could be my mixer though, to be fair. Uh, take it apart, love. Let's see what's inside. No air vents. Does it get warm? No, I'll be honest. No, it doesn't get warm. Um, in terms of heat, it doesn't really get hot at all. It's actually quite nice. Nigel's saying blue as the LED. So you think the paint will last or scratch easy? I think it will scratch easy, yes. But then anything that's painted is going to scratch easy. I mean, you can't really, you can't really, you know, you've got to be careful, haven't you? Depending where you put it, what you've got it up against. Right. Jason again, I think I need a pair of these decks. They are very nice. They are very nice, but they are bloody expensive. John Plunkett would be nice in silver. It would, it would be nice in silver, but even the versions that outside of the UK, they've got 1200 Mark 7 as well as the 1210 Mark 7, which we have here, 1210 obviously. They're not, they're not silver, they're black, so it's 1200 Mark 7. I mean, the next question now is, is are they mod worthy, which we'll go through in a minute. Uh, what's the verdict Ian's asking then? Are you, you going to get yourself a second one? Oh, I'll go through that in a minute. Brad is brown. Are all the LED spring loaded across all Technics models? Well, there's springs inside the assemblies, but not like that. I mean, that's just cheap, personally. So me, I'll just leave it on and forget about it now. But yeah, um, how light is it? Ridiculous. Literally little finger 
I can lift the deck up with a little finger, look. That's how light it is. Hurts a little bit, but you can lift it up with your little finger if you really have to. Uh, Mark Singleton saying, great, honest review, Jay. Thank you, mate. Uh, we've got Lee. Uh, Jay again, will you buy another one and make a pair? Yeah, I probably will, if I'm honest. Let's get to the point now with this part of the review, shall we? People still messaging me. Jesus, this is a, probably one of the busiest videos I think I've done. Starting this page a long time ago. Um, right, so guys, my honest opinion on this turntable, yes, I would buy another one. Um, my options either I keep it and take it home and then wait until I can afford to get another one or uh, I'll send it back and get a refund and maybe test something else out in comparison. I know it's going to be an RP7000 Mark II at some point here, hopefully, after they're finished at BPM. We can see what the, what the fuss is about with that. But this... So what Panasonic have done is a very nice turntable. I think if you've used an M5G and you use a Mark II and you can't get on the M5G and mix on it, you know they're not the best of turntables for mixing the M5G. I don't care what anybody says. The M5G looks great. Pitch is horrendous to use. It is horrendous. Um, not the most tightest of pitch at all. This is a completely different game changer. It, it locks... The cogging issue on the platter was the main cause of the route, really, I think. But they've tweaked the pitch. I don't know what they've done, but it feels very, very, very nice. Um, the only things I don't like, like I said, was the fact that the base is quite light. It's made out of plastic for a start. And, um, yeah, I mean, apart from that, it is actually a very, very nice turntable. The arm is, I mean, I'd be very dubious with the arm, but everything on it does feel quite solid. It's not something that I'd walk in and go, oh, it's not worth the money. I mean, if that had have had a rubberized base like the original the Mark II to the Mark Vs do, I think the majority of people would probably say, take my money, if I'm honest with you. So maybe something to try and do is to try and incorporate an older style base. Maybe I can have a look at that. Incorporate an older style base. Quite difficult with the way that obviously everything's all interlinked inside. But then in saying that, everything's all, um, it's all flat anyway inside. It's all just a flat section. So I probably could get to either get something machined, cost quite a bit of money, get something machined or, um, or make my own and do that. That's no biggie. In terms of mod work on these decks, uh, there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of potential on these, I can see straight from the word go. I mean, don't be surprised if I do keep this deck to see a straight, straight carbon fibre tone arm on this for a start. I think the first thing I'll probably try and do, apart from rip its guts out and have a good look inside, will be to take the arm out of the deck, desolder the connections for the back of the sockets, this is if I keep it, and um, see if I can retrofit the Mark II arm inside. Personally, um, is that wrong with this arm? It's nice. It's a nice arm. It feels nice. It's solid. Everything on it just feels like an old friend, you know what I mean? It's like an old Technics. If you're used to using Technics, you'll love it. Any turns have a little feel very similar like this. I'd give it, I'd just give it, I'd give it 8 out of 10 purely for the fact on the arm, purely for the fact of where the pivot bearings and the pivots and the bearings are. So I know from the old one when I reviewed the um, the GR arm, which people were giving me stick for online, but I didn't, just didn't understand. I wasn't impressed with the way that the arm itself was built. Now, I don't know whether this is the same. I've obviously not had the arm from an M the Mark 7 off. Now I know the Mark 7 and obviously the GR, the connection sockets at the back are completely different because obviously on the GR, it's a separate unit underneath where the connectors go straight in, you take the whole arm out. This has a separate socket underneath at the back. So this means having to dewire that, desolder the wires, probably the ground, and um, then you take the whole arm of the deck up off obviously off from that so it's going to be interesting to see what that's like so the other thing that i've noticed with this deck is the way that the graphics they're not actually raised at all it's like they've been printed so in terms of people that if you do decide to buy these and you want to have them wrapped for an example that's a very very high probability that this can be done i'd have no problems at all wrapping one of these turntables um, it's all very flat. The only thing you haven't got is the pitch trim. Because obviously the pitch trims on a Mark II up to a Mark VI, they're all separate. So you can put them down, take them off. 
what they've done with this particular deck is everything is all integrated so there is no separate pitch trim so the only thing that could be a problem because obviously i freehand all of my wraps i don't do anything on a computer apart from the platter tops and obviously smaller adapters but the the actual main plinth of the deck itself is all done freehand the way that i wrap it around the way that i bend it i do the corners everything there's nothing done on a computer like that i'm very careful you know sit there swearing away cutting myself to shreds with the with me surgical blade doing it properly um you know that's how it's meant to be done i'm still getting more people message me so would i buy one would i buy another one yes would i advise you guys to buy one it depends if you've got a, a fully working mark ii at home if you've had them serviced recently by me if they've been serviced by anybody not everyone's a bodge merchant i can appreciate that um you know if it's in good working order the pitch holds and the arm tracks would you upgrade for one like this depends if you want the mark seven if you like the way it looks you can go the other way guys you could actually wrap your mark ii in the same matte black that this has done and uh, just install blue leds and have the arm sprayed the whole arm assembly sprayed in black there's no reason why you couldn't do that i can do that with my eyes closed so look at it that way you don't have to spend all that money it might cost you a little bit for wrap if you had a single deck and you wanted this wrapped in the matte color matte color 70 quid 35 70 quid um you know arm assembly respray that will vary depending on the state of your arm but again it's a good turntable would i buy another one yes will i buy another one probably this is going to be here for a little while anyway so for anybody that does come down drop their turntables off that wants to see what one of these is like it's going to be here um there's no point in me taking this home because obviously my personal decks are now gone so at the moment at home i've got a denon mixer with just this turntable so there's no point in taking it home I might as well keep it here and um and do that it's not going home straight away anyway there's going to be another review video done this week like i explained right at the very beginning of this video there's going to be a camcorder a digital camcorder turning up ideally tomorrow and at some point this week i'll be doing a comparison video very similar to this just highlighting the bullet points editing everything and putting it on youtube and all the keyboard warriors out there that disagree with everything i say couldn't give two shits this is my honest review from somebody that strips apart and customizes Technics turntables every day of the week, and I've been doing it for years. Um, and I was reviewing with someone that knows these decks very, very well. And I'll honestly say, yes, I'll buy another one. So, inwardly, I thought I'd be getting this out of the box, I thought I'd plug it in, and it wouldn't be able to mix a pancake on it, and it'd be literally just look at it, slanging it off down to the ground like I do with these other ones. But, uh, but no, it's not the case at all. This is a very nice deck, everything works fine few concerns here and there a few little bits but no i think the most important thing to do now guys is see if we can get inside it don't you let's see if we can get inside it without um without disrupting anything because i've got to be careful but i yeah like i said this this deck i think it's safe to say this deck will be staying so let's have a butcher shall we Let's see, that's the best way. So we've got the polystyrene there for it upside down. I don't really want me doing that. And the arm off. That can go here, that can go there. That can come straight back off easy that time, isn't it? Right. It's how light it's how light it is, guys. Any other questions from anybody? Well you got me on here still, because I am gonna be here for a little while yet. Take it apart, give us a look. This is exactly what I'm gonna do. And before any of these bloody competitors, I don't know who's watching or what, before any competitors jump on the bandwagon and go, oh you don't know what you're doing. Look. I work on Mark IIs. I openly admit to anybody that brings things into me, I'm a cu I class myself as a customization specialist. Customization, okay, that's all I do. I know how to service techniques, I've been doing it for a long time, okay? But customization is what I deal with. 
LEDs, under platter kits. Repairing decks is not the hardest thing on the planet. If you can use a multimeter, if you can look at frequencies, you've got a frequency counter and you've got an oscilloscope and you can read a service manual, what more do you need to know? That's my matter on that. That's enough on that matter anyway. I'm not going to get funny, but that just pisses me off because I know what's going to happen the minute someone gets into this video. Right, um, let's think of doing this the logical way. So, I have got one of my old leaf covers. Um, here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. Let's use an old bit of this, with some bubble wrap over the top. From marking. I think you guys are going to be interested to see what's inside, aren't you? I know I am. So, why the fucking hell is that such an angle? <laughs> Right, I think we're safe to say that's not going to go anywhere. Let's see what we're working with, shall we? It's all locked in. No security seals or anything, is there? No. Right, so. Let's have a butcher. So have we got the usual screws underneath the feet? Yes, we have. The screw, the feet in general, pretty much the same as a Mark II. In fact, what Mark II foot here, look. Slightly, slightly different design, but pretty much the bloody same. Right, so one, two, three, four. I'm going to do this the other way. Usually I'll be drilling these, but I'm not doing that. Purely for the fact it's a brand spanking new turntable. I can't see jack shit. There we go. Well, how much these screws are each, guys? What, four quid each? <laughs> Mental. This has made life easier. Every screw on this is exactly the same. The one thing that has made me laugh on this is they haven't got a security seal on it. So like I'm doing right now, you can literally open it up and have a look inside. And uh, I'd be none the wiser. It's crazy. And if I wasn't keeping this turntable, trust me on this, I wouldn't be doing it. Talk about shoot yourself in the foot. Imagine doing, imagine doing this, and then the shop that's that you've obviously bought this from sees the video. It'd be like, whoops. <laughs> so, nah. This is why I'm doing it because it's mine now. So, my baby. Add to the elite collection of techniques that I've got here. So. Well, so we've still got watching and we've still got 30 odd people, which is good. I appreciate everyone's probably still at work or on lunch or whatever it is now. We've got quarter two. Right, they are all out, apart from that one. It's always the way. We are a screwdriver kit. So these are all there. They're exactly the same. There's no way of putting these on wrong. Um, wow, that's that's incredibly easy. So look, Jesus, that's uh, that is completely piece of piss <laughs> to take apart. Holy God! Right, let's get this over here. So. Let's give you guys a little run through, shall we, of how this stuff on here is connected. So the actual assembly itself, let's just turn this around again. You lot are all going to want to see this, aren't you? So this is the back view, guys, the back view of the arm. 
main board, pitch, RCA connections with the cable, the ground, mains, the transformer for the mains, assembly for the start and stop. You can all see on here with the start and stop assembly, so you've got the switches the same. The way it connects is different, the board itself is different. The actual plastic surround for it looks incredibly similar. The connections are different. It is very well built actually. The pop-up, <laughs> the bloody pop-up. So that pathetic push fit pop-up connection is, uh, is actually quite intricate, look at it. So it is spring loaded obviously like we said connect straight in so if you in fact that's quite that's quite clever so i could change the led color quite easily on that either doing it from one end or the other but that's quite easy to know the pitch control looks very complicated on this very inter intricate on here indeed um i don't know start taking things apart on here with brand spanking new pitch don't get me wrong i want to see if there's a way of looking at the actual slider but i don't think you can everything on this has been changed i'm just seeing if there's anything Hang on, let's turn the light, a lamp on here. Hang on, guys. The torch motor. I can't turn the bloody thing on. That's a bugger. So I want to see if I can get behind the the board. See if you can put the click back in. That'd be quite nice. But there isn't really much to it. So the, the lead weighting and things you had on the original Mark II is completely different. The actual base has had that in, internally done. Um, yeah. All in all, the only thing that looks suspect is the arm so like i explained to everybody before the entire assembly if you look and you see in here you see that black section that goes inside that section when you undo and you loosen that it goes up and down there's no separate sections like on a mark ii arm which is a bit of a shame <laughs> to say the least because that's going to cause problems if anything gets hit on top it can crack you've got to change the entire assembly um, in terms of it coming off, I was absolutely right. So you've got one cable that comes out, goes straight in, connects up to the to obviously the red and the white, so the red, the uh, the right and the left. Then you've got your ground, so you literally unclip and unclip the cable. Your whole arm will come out of the deck. Um, in terms of fitting a Mark II arm onto the deck, I don't think that's going to be a five-minute job. Let's have a quick look. Hang on. I actually got a Mark II arm here. Next to my human traffic poster we'll see the difference in terms of distance of the markings so hang on so this is obviously your mark two arm i want to measure the distance between the angles so where's my digital calipers hang on so if i zero this and get my adjustments from top to bottom the screw points just to get a rough idea 9.74 so 9.74 and 5 and 5 the two screw points here are practically the same going from here to here center to center 9.40 Nine fours. Ooh, do you know what, guys? There's a possibility that would fit. But the only problem is, I think, is how the arm screws on because this is obviously all cast and made to fit this arm. It's not going to fit through because obviously it sticks out as far. Let's have a look. Hang on. Let's have a look. Behind the actually behind them, is it okay? Then so 
slides out. Let's go hide the actual sockets themselves. Ah, okay. I think we'll leave that. <laughs> we'll leave. There we go. There we go. Lovely. question now is do I risk it I could I could desolder the four connections and then you've got the black one for the thing there as well Let's see if it is the only thing I'm bothered about you see is where it goes on is actually how much room you've got for maneuverability I don't think that's going to be enough in fact I sit that down like this. There is a very high possibility that will go on. As long as that unit there is separate, this is what I'm trying to work out. It looks like it is. White, blue, red, brown, black. Shall I do it, guys? Shall I try it? Because there is nothing else connecting it other than inside the deck. Fuck it, let's have a look. It's all part of the fun, isn't it? That can go back on because that literally just holds the RCA still and pushes them in. So I'll leave that loose because that's what has that next to it. These two screws on the other hand, so we've got one, two, three, and four. It's all right, you lot saying go for it. It's not your bloody turntable worth 800 quid. <laughs> you haven't even had it a day and I've already taken it apart. It says it all, doesn't it? It's fairly straightforward though, everybody, so. Just this out of the way. Wasn't planning on soldering anything, but let's, uh, let's get on it, shall we? One, two, three, four. Tweezers. It's all nice and easy to put them all back on again. Low heat, don't want to go for anything. Yeah, this is a Mark 7, Gavin. So this is the moment of truth, because there is literally nothing else that holds the arm onto the turntable base itself. So the screws are exactly the same. There 
we go. There's one Mark Seven tone arm. Only I, only I could buy an eight hundred pound turntable and strip it down under a day. Moment of truth, everybody. Without obviously scratching this up, so I want to turn this around and Let's see first. What a shame. Now, in terms of how it fits, oh, what a bugger. So, one, two, three. It's exactly the same on the front. Slow, it's that bit at the back. Yeah, the bit at the back there is such a shame because the actual arm itself is the same angle. The same bloody angle the way it goes in. So if I turn this around again so you guys can actually see it, that's a bit of a shame, but at least we've had a look. So as you can see, it's the same angle. That's as far as you can get it. What a shame. What a shame. So what's done it there, I think, is this bit. Unless you machine that fucker out, I don't think you're going to be getting that in. That's as far as it goes. I'll tell you what, guys. If that honestly went on there, I mean, apart from the fact it's a 1200 top section with the 1210 base, I mean, can you imagine that with a 1210 arm? <laughs> Mark II. That would look the bollocks, wouldn't that? <laughs> right. Let's turn this around, shall we? Let's get this back together. So the main difference between the GR arm and the Mark 7 arm is the bottom base. It hasn't got the separate section that has the RCA plugs. Yeah, I'm not dremeling anything. <laughs> this is I'm not I'm not that mad. I'm not doing that. This is my turntable, so. You've got to be fucking kidding me. You don't want to do that. Be my guest, but not with my own one. <laughs> Funny bug, isn't it? I hope this has been some help, guys. Anyway, I know that I waffle on a lot of my previous videos and there's always something that ends up winding me up somehow or somebody but this I thought would make a nice change to do a proper in-depth review of the workings of the turntable I am a bit sh I'm a bit gutted about the arm though guys I'm a bit, I must admit because that looked I mean the thing is the mounting holes themselves are from what I could see they're the same it was, it's such a shame I think they've deliberately done that, so you can't put it in. That's what I think. Which is a bad move. A bad move as far as techniques are concerned, because I could have left a lot of options open for modders like myself. I mean, the arm itself takes about 20 seconds to put in, so I can imagine repair work being on this when arms break, being very straightforward. It's getting everything apart to get in there and take the components out. Did it with the GR? Pretty complicated. <laughs> Pretty complicated. Alright, let's get this back together. And then I'll put the top back on. So we've got fresh solder on. Clever, I shouldn't even need to use the tweezers with this. That's what she said. One, white, blue, maybe, red,
black which out of all of them is actually the hardest one to take off to get some fresh sample on this Just being a stubborn little bastard, weren't you? It's always the way, you always get one. You always get one that doesn't want to play ball. In fact, we'll go over the red as well, even though I've put fresh solder on this. I just want to go over it. Instead of using tweezers or whatever. going to use tweezers because that's probably the most obvious way of keeping it still. Lovely, there we go. Excellent. Right, that's that back on. Put the little plate back on that holds the wire. And the little screws that Hold this back together. What's the so Gavin's going? What's the verdict? Worth the money or not? Uh, I think it's really, really nice personally. If you can excuse the fact that it's eight hundred quid's worth of turntable, I personally think it's worth the money. If you if, if you love your Technics that much, you know. If you're not bothered about the, the pitch control, all you're bothered about is, um, like I said to you all before, all you're bothered about is quick pitch movements, then I think any turntable is going to pretty much do what you want it to do. And what I'm going to do with this, without knackering that, is actually take the section for this out. It seemed a bit difficult taking this out and it shouldn't be, they should go in quite straightforward so there's not much really to these decks though. Which is quite nice. There we go. I thought it was bloody easy than that. <laughs> for fuck's sake. Lovely. There we go. Easy peasy. The last two screws for that plate to cover over the RCA sockets. Can I get a Mark II base on it? Someone's asking. That was the first thing I was thinking here. I've actually got a base here, so I want to see just how different. But the thing is, it's not the weighting side of it was the inner side, so the inner section for it, the weighted weight section, so the weight section even. So that's going to be the biggest thing. I mean, you could in theory. Let's have a quick look at the old, the other base. So you've got a sheet basically inside the newer base. The same as what the stand to. That batch, that sheet makes it heavy. Other than that, they're nothing, right? The older Technics, different. So the base from an older Technics. I don't think you're going to find will fit at all. It's completely wrong size. It's thicker all over. You've got no chance of getting that on there without some extreme modifications to the actual casing. So the only way you find you fit the older one is by literally building up the size, having the cast made, having it remade. Personally, if you're using it at home, then I wouldn't bother. That's my honest opinion. But using them out in about a gigs, I think that's where you're going to run into issues. So that's everything back on. Everything's back exactly as it should be. 
Let's get our base back on, shall we? I've been happy with this now because I've done pretty much what you guys have all been wondering. The screws are all exactly the same size as well, so they've made service work very, very easy. No doubt at some point, I will look again at the arm and see what can be modified to make it fit. Maybe even make a plate. Hang on. As you actually see here. Yeah, maybe even I might try and make a plate with my 3D printer. Um, sit across where the original mountain section is, make these nut, make the bolts bigger, and then see if that makes any difference. What we got? Uh, Jake is getting Mark II base. I'm going to try that. John says shame. Paul, what were the benefits of the older Mark II base than, other than weight towards the new rubber versus plastic? Is it? Well, this entire section, the entire base, the whole thing is made out of plastic. That's the big problem with this. The entire thing is made out of plastic. It's like an ABS. There's nothing wrong with it. It's good, but it isn't going to be fantastic using out of gigs. It's got the same consistency as if you buy an old budget, you know, beginner's turntable, which I think might put a lot of people off. The pitch control isn't the issue, so I want to get that out there. If you knew you lot of watching this like I was, thinking the pitch was going to be terrible, it's not. So you can get that out of your head. It's not the pitch. As far as I'm concerned, this is this is the closest thing you're going to get to an original Technics turntable. And if I can manage, to, if I can modify the arm from an old Mark II to fit onto this turntable and do a few bits with wrap and uh, maybe change the LED so you can switch it to two different, completely different color LEDs, find out what LEDs are currently in it, or the ranges or the wattages for them, um, the voltage even. I think we'll be in for a bit of a winner. But there's no point saying you're gonna keep something if you're not gonna take it apart. <laughs> it's like doing all the time with stuff. I can't keep things in one piece. I like seeing how things work. I like sussing things out, what parts can be retrofitted. I mean the arm, I mean don't be surprised if you see a Mark II arm at some point on this deck. And just for peace of mind after I've done this, I'm going to plug it back in just to make sure. Because <laughs> you've got to do it, you? I've just sold all the cables back on, for Christ's sake. Now, if I, if I plug it in, and I only get audio out of one side, I blame you lot. <laughs> Makes me look great, doesn't it? Eh? I don't care, it's all good fun. I'm dying to do this video. I was going to do it originally for the GR, wasn't I? I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I held out. This was released shortly after, so... Shortly after I decided I was going to do a review even. Right, anyone else got any more questions while you've got me on here still? Battery's at 10%. Shit, I better plug my phone in. Hang on. Bloody hell, that's, that's not lasted long at all. I've gone through 70% battery doing this video, guys. Hang on, let's plug this in. There we go. Lovely. Last thing I wanted to do all that and lose the whole bloody thing because it's uh, <laughs> because the battery runs out. Right. One mark seven back together. One thing straight out of the thing I will tell you all though, is it does attract a lot of dust. Um, that's mainly, mainly because of the paint finish on it. It's like when you get like a mattified finish on a car. I have a nightmare reboxing this up. <laughs> Just put this on here for a second. 
You don't want to see me do another mix on this, just, to, just for your own peace of mind. So you can all see that the pitch control actually does hold. Let's do the ground cable first. I learned that from the last time I did this bloody thing. What do you think then, guys? <laughs> yeah, James, yeah. For my own peace of mind, yeah. Not my professional ability. <laughs> Just my peace of mind. I'll do that and it all fucking goes bang. It just explodes on me and flies everywhere. Right, okay. Let's get all this shit out of the way. Let's get this other deck back on here again. Even though we know that the bearings are pretty shit towards the end, it doesn't mean that you can't do that. Let's just quickly move that. Right, okay, okay. So let's pick a couple of records that I don't normally... It's better with my sexy slip mats on though. <laughs> right, what else have we got here? Ding dong! What have I got? So I went through a couple of my vinyl records the other day. Let's try, I'll tell you what. It's a little bit different. Let's do Mrs. Woods on the 1210 Mark II. Mark Energy Mix, okay. That deck definitely, definitely needs a service, don't you? Switch on the back. Right. 
fucking needle keeps skipping. I'm gonna. Uh, skip. <laughs> For this Technics Mark II over here, I can get stuck because it is in a right old state. <laughs> Can't believe it. Can't believe it, guys. Um, right, I think that pretty much concludes it. Um, anything anybody else wants to know while I've got this here, please tell me now. It's going to be here for a few days yet. So, anyone got any ideas or anything that needs to be looked at, you've got me for a couple of days with this turntable. <sighs> Thing. I had to put a 1210 in that has to have a problem with the bloody bearings, didn't I? Well, that's just typical, but that's just life. So, it's been a quite a long review. I can appreciate, I really appreciate you guys still sticking with me while I've been doing this. I know a lot of people by now probably would have clicked off and gone, oh, this is boring or whatever, or it's not what they want. But I suppose the Technics, you know, the tech, real loyal Technics fans really needed to know these questions. And I think it's only fair that you guys knew. So, my honest opinion, uh, I, I wasn't going to jump on here and start bad mouthing the deck because I didn't know anything about it. This is the first time I've seen one. First time I've unboxed one. And like I stated before, I bought this with my own money. It hasn't been given to me or gifted to me for review by any company or anything at all. I bought this with my own money purely for you guys on this channel. And it was either going to go one or two ways. Either it goes back for a refund because it's not very good, or it goes home with me because it's pretty damn good. Um, to be honest, it looks like it's going to be going home, but I'm not going to take it home just yet. I'll we'll have another, another good look at it, see if there's anything I can do obvious modifications. But in terms of functionality, in terms of what you can do, how they mix, how the platter feels when you slow it down, how it feels when you speed it up, uh, yeah, I, I can't fault that. I actually think it's a really nice turntable. The only thing that's going to put a lot of people off now is the price. I mean, they are still £800. It's the most expensive DJ based turntable on the market. I'm going to add that as well because when I was looking online yesterday before I made the purchase, the most dearest one out of all of them before that was the RP8000 by Reloop. I think that was about 600 And there's the, the, uh, the VL12 Denon, which again is another, not a super OEM deck, this is another one that's been rebuilt from scratch by Denon or in music and everybody else. Um, that'd be one I'd be pretty keen to get my hands on as well. So don't be surprised if you start seeing other turntables here doing reviews. My YouTube channel in general at the moment is pretty bare, um, but there's going to be a lot on there. This turntable will be the first one. This will be the first one. So, um, yeah, just keep your eyes peeled on the page. There'll be a proper in-depth video review of this turntable before, way before I take it home. I know this was a pretty in-depth one as far as watching me use it, but it needs to be edited Need to do another video, better video quality, better sound quality of a condenser mic, and do things properly. Uh, Paul, what's the underneath of the platter like? I'll show you. There you go. Nice thick rubber. Big old magnet. The only thing I'm a bit concerned about, though, is the underneath of the platter. Can you see that? I might, have to, I might actually call Panasonic up about this because that's not actually stuck down. I mean, that's, this is the only, this is actually the only issue I found with the deck itself was this. It looks like the, machi the actual machining of the platter has not been done correctly because, as we all noticed when I showed you the video from the very beginning, it fluctuates up and down, and the platter itself isn't 
warped. It's just the way the strobe dots go. The pitch issues that apparently were a big problem with these from the word go, um, plus or minus six, I think it was. They're not there anymore. They seem to be quite tight. They still have to have some sort of increments. The only issues that I found with this deck, like I say, was this was the main one. Um, and obviously when you've got the cogging issue that they have meant to have gotten rid of, the cogging issue when you change the torque settings to a higher torque is very noticeable. But if you have it at low or default settings, it isn't visible at all. And that's pretty much what I'd be leaving it at if it was me. I have this now set at the default setting. I've got the brake set at the higher setting. So it stops more like a modern turntable. And the torque is plenty enough on the normal default setting for scratching and for mixing anyway. I think it'd be overkill if you had this set to high on a deck like this, personally. But no, my overall, just to conclude then everybody, just to conclude my, my thoughts, my Jerry's final thought, uh, Jerry Springer, my final thought on the 12 Mark 7. Let's turn the camera over here. So everybody, 12 Mark 7. All in all, just to conclude, very nice turntable. Any problem areas you see, like everybody already knows, which is obviously the base. Everyone knows the base is going to be a bit of a pain. This attracts dust. Look at this, look. That's dust. <laughs> Craziness. That is absolutely ridiculous. I might speak to them about this. It's like the finish is very mattified. Almost like they haven't put enough clear cut over the top. Look, you see how it's running all the dust up, look. So if you've got dirty fingers, don't touch the turntable. Because <laughs> that's really bad. That's one advantage of the old Mark IIs over these. Doesn't go away though. But yeah, sexy looking deck. I like the buttons, like the LEDs, like the way you can switch it over. So that's all the recessed parts that everybody loves. Pitch control feels lovely and smooth. It is a very nice turntable, guys. Prefer the look of the old arm. I will more than likely retrofit an older arm on. So I won't worry too much about any of that. But that's my that is my input on the Mark VII. So, once again, everybody, thank you ever so much for watching. Thanks for taking your time to join me with this. Um, I've been wanting to do this for quite a while now, and it's nice that I actually had the money spared that I could throw out the review to do this. Um, there's going to be a lot more reviews, all different products as well, as we already know this, but this is the number one thing that I thought I'd get out of the way, considering it is the only thing that Technics have on the market that is actually worth reviewing. The rest of it is all audiophile. So, guys... Lovely turntable, my honest opinion, digital pitch on this deck, digitally controlled, very, very tasty. So I'm a big fan of that. Brake feels good, torque feels good, tracking feels good. It's a nice deck. So guys, feel free to share this review. Obviously don't share it with any competitors, I don't care what they think. And that's where they should have got the deck and done it themselves, isn't it? But there we go. So the review for YouTube will be up at some point this week once I've got all the video footage together and I'll get it all on camcorder and get it all down. Once that's done, I'll um, obviously send all the bits and get it all through on the page. So you'll be the first people to know. And we'll go from there. I'm sure this isn't the last you're going to be seeing in this deck. This is mine now to keep. Like I said, my verdict, the Gladiator verdict I told you, was either this or this. It's not. It's definitely going to be that. It's a big thumbs up from me. This deck is staying. So I'm now £800 down, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm £800 out of pocket now. So no more bike parts. Fuck's sake, I'm not happy now. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Thank you ever so much, guys. And I'm more than likely you'll see more posts from me a little bit later because there's some new products I'm going to be releasing now anyway. So thanks for joining me with the Mark 7. Great to see you all again, guys. Take it easy and thank you very much. See you later.